Hey there, I'm Rebecca from the Woodland Studio. Thanks for hanging out with me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how I turned an outdated orange console into something that you can find at Urban Barn. A few months ago, I went on in an online estate sale auction and scored a really awesome console table. What I love about online estate sales is that you can actually set your limit for how much money you want to spend. So in my case, I did not want to spend more than $30. The computer will automatically bid for me up until that point, and lucky enough, I got it for my max bid of 30 bucks. Some estate sales that I like using is max sold. I knew right away that I wanted to make this piece more modern with that beige neutral aesthetic. You can see a lot of this at Urban Barn or Crate and Barrel. And a lot of furniture artists are using Algonquin paint from Fusion Mineral Paint in order to achieve that look. What is even cooler about this piece is that it's a crawler. If you don't know, this is a furniture company from 1893. All the fabrication processes are American from start to finish. This console table was in basically excellent condition, especially for the number of years it must have been around. The style seems to be 1960s to 1970s. I knew that this just needed a good wash without any repairs. Now that it's been inspected, it is time to get to cleaning. I decided to mix up Crud Cutter's original cleaner following the recommended portions. See the description for details. However, if you do use the Crud Cutter pre-paint, you don't need to rinse off after cleaning. I would spray my solution, rub and scrub, and then wipe down. Then I rinsed off the residue with a water-soaked towel, and then I let it dry. These are called carbide scrapers. This one is from Baco, and as you can see here, the blade is really long, so this is good for large surface areas. This one is Hide. I got this from Amazon, and what's really cool about this one is that it comes with different blade heads. So as you can see here, it's a pointy head, and this is more round. So this can get into those areas which are more concave, and this can get into really fine detailed sanding. What's also super cool is how easy it is to change the blades. You just pop this lever and the blade comes out. As you can see here. And then when I want to put it back, I just put it on, flip it around, and I'm good to go. And this comes with about eight to 10 different blades. What's also really great about scraping is that, yes, it does take a bit of arm work, but it's less messy. You don't need to use chemical strippers. And honestly, I find these to be awesome. As you saw, scraping does take a lot of arm work, but it's so worth it in the end. Not only do you get a little bit of a workout, just kidding, but you are using less sanding discs overall to get off the finish. I also like the added benefit of not using the chemical stripper unless you really need to. 
Another pointer is to make sure to see if you have veneer. You can see that by looking at the very back of the piece to see you know, what kind of thickness you have. In my case, some areas of veneer were a little thin, so I needed to make sure that I used 100 grit sanding discs and move up from there in order to prevent myself from actually sanding through the veneer. As you can see here, sanding the finish after scraping makes the process way smoother. And do you want to know another bonus secret? Bam! This is from a company called Sharple. It's 1200 fine grit and you can use this to sharpen your carbide scrapers. Added bonus, you don't need a fancy solution. You can actually use crud cutter in order to sharpen and I'll show you that next. Admittedly, there were some areas that were really, really hard to reach and scrape or even sand, so I did need to use a chemical solution. I found one from the Home Depot. It has really, really low VOC, so it's a little bit more environmentally friendly, and I'll show you that next. Now that all the old finish was removed, it was time to move up in grits. Using my surf prep, I jumped to 150 grit, then to 180, and finally at 220. Between sanding stages, it's important to wash off all the sanding dust. The wash also helps the grain to raise so you can smooth it down even more. I repeated this cleaning process between every grit until the final stage. Another great tool for the workshop, a tack cloth. I got these from the paint people. You can get them on Amazon or any hardware store in your area. What's great about a tack cloth is that I use it on the final stage after I'm finished all my sanding. It's going to help pick up any dust, dirt, sanding dust, hair, anything on the surface, and it's going to help prepare the surface for my conditioner, for my stain, or in my case, my paint wash. If I were to have used a wet rake or a wet microfiber cloth, it actually would have raised the grain, which is something you don't want. So get a tack cloth. To make the wash, I used distilled water. This way the wash is not contaminated with tap water. I used one part paint to two parts water.
I needed to elevate my piece off the floor. If I was going to do a paint wash, I didn't want to accidentally drag the paintbrush all the way to the ground and pick up stuff from the ground. So what I did is I took four paint cans to elevate the piece. And do you want to know what tools I use for paint washing? These bad boys. These are all from Country Chic Paint. Now, I was sponsored by Country Chic about two years ago, so I did get these for free, but honestly, they're amazing. What I love about this piece right here, this brush, is that it really is just so fine. The paint bristles, even after two years of use, are just so smooth. And you'll see in some of the footage when I'm painting, it just goes on like butter. This tool here is their uh, larger uh, paintbrush. <laughs> and I use this for the large surface areas. And then I go in with their foam pad here in order to smooth out the paint. For the fine line area, I used the delicate purple painter's tape since I was using a solid beige paint for the line work. All my footage of spraying my top coat just disappeared. So I'm gonna to have to tell you about it. I use Verathane Diamond Finish water-based top coat in matte because I just love a matte finish. I put that into my Wagner sprayer and sprayed it. I used three layers of top coat, sanding smooth with that brown paper bag between each spray that I did. I would wait about three hours between each spraying. You can use a paintbrush, you can use a foam pad, but spraying my top coat really gives that beautiful factory finish that I admire and love. That's why I use it. And here we have it, the final reveal. I'm so happy with how this console table turned out. The Algonquin paint wash brought it from an old and yellow to fresh and modern. Thank you so much for following along with me in this video. Leave a comment below telling me your favorite furniture flip. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to get back to you. Don't forget to like this video too, especially if you found it helpful. Also subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications bell. That will alert you when my next video is out. Well, thank you again so much for hanging out with me. Have a beautiful day, and remember, you can do it too.